Hello everybody, this is Matt here again with GeoNow with the part four of the series of videos that I'm doing on geology as a career, particularly focusing on your education requirements to become a geologist. In this video, I'm going to be outlining things that you can do during your graduate school, particularly your master's degree, but this can apply to a PhD as well, that are going to help you get ahead and, and set you up well for a career path. The first thing I'm going to say, and it's similar to what I said for the undergraduate video, so that was part two. If you haven't seen that, you may want to go see some of these other videos because they've got some good information too. But the first thing I'm going to say is get to know the professors, get to know the other students, get to know the faculty within the geology department. Make yourself known, and particularly to your professor, your, your thesis advisor. When you go to graduate school, you'll have one professor that is your thesis advisor, and you need to kind of focus on getting to know that professor and working with them, work, work with the other students that also work with that professor. But it's also a good idea to get to know the other professors in the department, get to know all of the students, get to know the administrators, whoever is in that department. You never know who's going to end up being a great friend for you and a great networking opportunity for you for your career. Number two, make sure that you're taking classes from your professor, your thesis advisor. Whoever he or she is, take a look at what classes they're offering for each semester and get into those classes because it's going to do you well. Obviously, those are the classes that are, are more focused on your area that you're trying to become an expert in. Those are the classes you'll want to take. It also gives you the opportunity to work with your professor more, show your professor how hard you can work, and to come to class prepared and make that good impression with them. And you'll have more to talk about with your professor as well. It'll give you opportunity in office hours to talk with that professor. It will give you just some great background knowledge that you're going to need for your thesis most likely and a great venue for you to ask questions related to the work you may be doing. All right, so I'll preface the third one by saying, and this could kind of be interjected anywhere, but during your two years as a master's student or during your time as a PhD student, you're going to be completing a large project or if you're PhD, multiple projects. I'm just going to be referencing a master's because that's the typical thing that a geologist does to get into a career path. But if you go on to get a PhD, that's great too. But just keep in mind that you're going to be completing a thesis, which means that it's going to require some field work maybe, it's going to require some study, it's going to require a lot of writing. So get comfortable with technical writing. But my point here in saying this is just get familiar with your professor, like I mentioned before, in the way that you feel comfortable approaching them anytime. So the third thing I'm mentioning is get to know your professor. Constantly be at your professor's office hours. So of course you're taking classes, so you'll be at office hours for that because you need to be filling in your gaps of knowledge, but also get in their office hours, you know, especially in that first semester, you're probably going to be putting together a proposal for your thesis project. So you're outlining the cost of things, what, you, what exactly you're going to be doing, where you're going to be doing the work, etc. So you need to be on top of things with your professor and do this throughout the full two years so that you're staying on top of your thesis and you're making sure you're doing what your professor is expecting and that the research is going according to his or her desire for your work. For number four, not only are you doing thesis work and coursework, and if you have a funded position, which you better, because that's what I recommended to you in video number three, on top of all these things, you have the responsibility to start networking. Now, whatever that means to you, I'm not sure exactly, but you need to be talking to other professors, people in the industry. Always ask the question, who do you know that I could talk to that's interested in blank, whatever you're interested in, right? and get to know those people. Give them a phone call. If they're local to your area, go visit their office. See if you can shadow them for a day. Just get to know people in the industry you're hoping to crack into, and it's really gonna go a long way. If I were you, since you're already dedicating probably 20 hours to working in the week, and you've already got coursework and thesis work, on top of that, you need to be dedicating and setting a goal four time every day to network. Whether that's a half an hour, dedicated to networking or an hour or what have you, whatever you think you can fit in, it's going, the more time you put into that, the more worth it is going to be and it's going to pay off for you. It's actually one of the more valuable things you can be doing with your time. And if you think about getting paid for what you're doing, 
that is going to pay off big time. It's not going to pay you in the moment, but certainly if you get a six-figure income because of your networking, it's going to have paid for itself by far. So get in, get in people's offices, get on the phone with people, talk to your, your classmates, talk to your professors, ask them that question. Who do you know that I could talk to about blank, whatever it is, and then talk to that person. Once you talk to that person, say, thank you for speaking with me. Who else do you know in this industry that I could get in touch with and ask them questions or get to know them? And then do that with those people. You know, most likely they'll give you a handful of people and then you'll network with those people always asking that same question. Who else do you know that I could get to know in this industry? The fifth thing I want to mention is if there are any competitions or anything like that, any opportunities to present or get in front of industry professionals, do that and do it well. Participate in those things. Get a team together for these competitions. There's one common competition that I know of that's called the Imperial Barrel Award, IBA, and you'll get together with maybe five other or four other classmates that are in your same year or at least in graduate school with you at the time at your same school and you'll be given a set of data and you come up with where you would drill for oil given that data and you'll have industry professionals that are there to mentor you you can have a professor mentor you it's a great opportunity that's just one example of something I participated in that I think was very helpful to me it gave me something to speak about with recruiters number six Graduate school is the time to find an internship. Between your first and second year is the ideal time to get an internship. I highly recommend it. And if you've been doing your networking, if you've been spending your half hour, hour a day, calling people up, visiting their offices, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to find an internship and, and you're gonna do great. So find an internship for that gap between years. You may be doing some thesis work in there as well, but find an internship in whatever your career field may be. So maybe it doesn't look like an internship, but maybe you can get a job somewhere part-time or even full-time. And how great would that be to earn a little extra income for, that, for those summer months, but also gain the experience that's going to be valuable for you once you graduate and possibly even get on with that company that you interned or worked for. This is the time to do it. So that first year of graduate school, be networking like crazy to be able to get an internship during the summer. And don't stop networking during your second year just because you got an internship. Because you don't know if that internship is going to give you a full-time offer for employment or if you're going to need to seek employment with another company. So go ahead and continue your networking goal within that second year as well. The final thing that I will mention, and number seven, is complete your research in a timely fashion. You should be able to complete your thesis from start to finish in that two-year span. You should be able to complete all of your coursework in that two-year span. You shouldn't have had any student loans. You shouldn't have had to work outside of school unless it's something to further your career because you've got a funded position and you have a stipend. That is something you need to work for. But if you go beyond that, you're going to lose that stipend and tuition covering. So you need to complete in a timely fashion for that. But it also looks good to industry professionals if you can get done in, in just the normal cycle of what a master's degree should take or a PhD or whatever it is you're completing. If you can complete it in a timely fashion, that's really going to show a lot about you. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope these tips are helpful to you if you're planning to start graduate school in geology. They're also probably helpful to you no matter what you're going to study. But thank you again for watching. Comment below with any questions you may have, anything that you want to discuss. I'm happy to do that. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and please like the video. And thanks again for watching.